My girlfriend said she was leaving me because I can't stop singing that Beatles song, I'm a Believer. I thought she was joking at first, and then I saw her face. There you go. How is everybody today? We're going to have a bit of a different kind of service this morning. We're going to be doing more singing than usual. I'm not getting rid of my sermon, but it'll be a small one, so you can keep your applause to a, a little roar. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I thought because we watched the movie Sing yesterday that we would do more focused on singing today, So, um, which I thought would be a good thing. We don't do that very often. So, um, <clears throat> so that being said, could I have the choir come up and we're going to sing a song. Um, it's in uh, your Faith We Sing book, 237. We're going to sing it first, and then uh, we're going to have you come in and sing along afterwards. Please stand as you're able. is a little bit off the off the cuff this morning so excuse us if we don't look like we know what we're doing because we've never done it this way before and that's okay um, if you look in the 
In the back where I've got February celebrations, uh, there's birthdays and uh, I underline the anniversaries. Uh, so we've got uh, some that are coming up here. Uh, it's been a while, seems like since we've had a birthday here, but we, we are going to be planning a couple songs here soon. Um, I don't think the 11th is this week, is it? That's next week. That's what I thought. Um, so uh, soup and sandwich meal is coming up February 9th. Uh, I have been telling the other church about that, so I hope we get some people coming from there. Uh, the government's governance meeting is February 7th. That's this Tuesday. Um, and I'll be doing a lunch with Pastor on the 17th uh, at the depot. That's two weeks. So uh, we will be starting up the Bible study also uh, on Thursdays at 7, and we'll continue with the season two of, uh, I wanted to say the view, but it's the chosen. And um, hope that you can come and join us. We do have a study book that we're going to try out. Um, yes. Oh, it is. When's your birthday? Tomorrow? <laughs> the sixth. Well, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. So is there any announcements that need to be spoken to that I don't have on here? I'm always learning new things. No? We had our last movie night last night. It went well. Um, we will be doing some picking of songs today uh, after the sermon. If you are interested in picking a song, uh, help us out by finding the page number that it's in in the book, and uh, that will make life a little easier for us. So keep that in mind. We'll probably do about four songs. Yes. So you heard it here. All you can eat. Well, that's nobody in this house. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. We appreciate any heart we get, but uh, any other announcements? Let's do the call to worship. Oh, I almost forgot. There is one announcement. It's sitting here staring me square in the face. Uh, as you might know, suicide prevention is one of the things that's important to me. Um, there is a poster out on the board out there. It's uh, Assist. They're having a conference at Hillman Church and... Um, it's two days, and if you want to go, it's $50 per person, but it'll, it'll give you skills on how to deal with suicide, recognizing suicide, how to help prevent suicide. Um, it's, it's important. Um, if you want to come, I know the seating is limited, so if anybody is interested, please join, but I wanted to make sure I said something about that. So uh, that said... Good morning, Spratt Church. Uh, my name is Russ Rowell, and if you could please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship, I'll read the light print if you could please respond with the dark print. In the presence of God, we gather. Like little children, we surround God.
we look and find a feast has been prepared for us. And you may be seated. And if the choir could join me up here, please.
prayers or praises this morning. Any? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are going to get some warm weather this week, so we're going to lose some of this ice and snow, so that might be a good thing. Anything? Well, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this group that's here this morning. I thank you for all that they do and try to do, dear Lord. And I pray that you give them a special uh, balm in their life that helps them through all the things. Because we are dealing with difficult times, dear Lord. And, and it's put a strain on all of us, dear Lord. And I just pray that you be with each person that's taken an active step in this church, dear Lord, and help them to do the things that they need to do. I pray that you be with those that might have had concerns that they didn't want to share or those online that we can't hear their concerns, dear Lord. We ask that you be with them. Be with the prayer concerns that are there. Be with us, not only as a country, but us as a local community and as a church in this community. I ask you, Lord, that you be with us in all of these things. In your precious name, amen. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> it's a short one. Today's scripture is from Psalms chapter 13, verse 4 through 5. But I trusted in your steadfast love, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully to me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. <clears throat> we should be always in the attitude of gratitude, and part of that attitude of gratitude is singing. I don't know about you, but singing has always been a big part of my life. I know because my mom was a, te a teacher of music. Um, she was the organist at my church, so you know that it was something I was always hearing. I know in my life, I was in the choir at the church growing up, Emmanuel United Methodist Church. And it was an intergenerational choir for me uh, because I was there, my brother was there eventually, uh, my mom was the organist, and um, then my grandparents were there, my mom's parents were there. So it was generational, and uh, it was always a special time. Um, I always remember I had a, a, a friend who sat, was in there, and he always sung off tune. And uh, it was just not in his nature to hear the songs and, and understand. Some people have pitch-perfect hearing. He had pitch-imperfect hearing. And uh, Tom, I love to death. He's a good guy. He's great at math. He just wasn't a good singer, but he sung in the choir. That was the important thing. Growing up in the 70s and the 80s like I did, I was a big fan of pop music. Some of my favorite groups were ABBA, Neil Diamond, ELO, ARIO, different ones. But I also liked Christian contemporary music, uh, Petra, uh, Randy Stonehill, there were different groups that were just really 
good to listen to. And, and the college I went to was fortunately one that had a radio station. So I grew up with music in my heart. And I know that with some of people, they may not feel the same way I do. Some people go to church and they just love and want to sing all that they can. I know that Leona is one. Leona loves to sing, right? I, I hear her singing all the time. And I know that the music is in her soul and, and that's a good thing. But some people, when they come to church, all they want to do is get past that music stuff so they could get to the scripture reading and hear the sermon. Because that to them is not an important part of the service. It's just the way some people are. Um, Martin Luther, who was uh, a reformist like Charles Wesley was, he's kind of the one that the, the Lutherans kind of paid more attention to than us, but he was influential in our church. He said this, A person who gives some thought and yet does not regard music as a marvelous creation of God, and these are his words, must be a clodhopper indeed and not deserve to be called a human being, he should be permitted to hear nothing but the braying of donkeys and the grunting of hogs. Pretty strong words from Martin Luther. But Wesley had some things to say too. And if you look in our hymnal, um, there is the numbered pages and then there is at the beginning, there is the Roman numeral pages. And if you turn to page 7 in the hymnal, you'll, I'm going to read from what's on that page. So if you want to open up to it, I won't read everything there, but you might find it interesting to hear what Wesley says, because it is Wesley's instructions on how to, to sing and how to use this book. And the first one is, learn these tunes before you learn any others. The next one says, sing them exactly as they're printed here without altering or mending them at all. I did a little research on that, and... Wesley was a great writer of hymns. A lot of them ended up in our hymnal. But the hymnal started to get published, and they didn't ask Charles Wesley for permission to do that. They just printed it. And so he is saying here that this is my creation, and if you're going to sing my creation, sing them exactly as I have written them. Don't be creative, because God blessed me to make perfect music and you certainly can't improve on God's blessing in my skill of writing. So it sounded a little arrogant, but he was saying God had inspired him. And how dare you to think you could inspire, be more inspired or better inspired than he was. But also it says, sing all. See that you join the congregation as frequently as you can. Sing lustfully with good courage. Be aware of singing as you were half dead or half asleep, but lift your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now or more ashamed of it being heard than you sung those songs of Satan. Being the bar music. Next one is sing modestly. Do not bawl, B-A-W-L, so that you hear above, that you as to be heard above or distinct from the rest of the congregation, that you may destroy the harmony. Part of singing is being in harmony and not being singing solos when everybody is trying to sing together. The next one, and I always think of Sue when I think of this, is singing in time. Whatever time is sung, be sure to keep with it. Sue is the one that sets the time, and so we need to follow her and and I know I'm always fighting you, and I apologize that. And, but it's, it's apparently Wesley has some words for me is that is sing in time. So I need to be better on that. Um, take care that you don't sing too slowly. Um, above all, this is the last one, sing spiritually. Have an eye to God in every word you sing. Aim to please him more than yourself, more than other creatures. You're singing to God. You're not singing to the cute girl on the, on the pew or the, the, the whoever. You know, it's to God that you're singing. 
The Bible contains over 400 references to singing. Uh, 50 are direct commands to sing to the people of the church. The longest book of the Bible is Psalms. It's the book of songs. It is, a hymn, it is basically the hymnal of the Jewish people. And we are commanded in the New Testament not once but twice to sing in church. It is important that we sing in church. So why does God often tell us simply to not just praise him but to sing? Well, I think part of it is is that in Zephaniah 3.17, it says God exalts over his people with loud singing. God sings because of his, how pleased he is with us when he's pleased with us. On the eve of his crucifixion, even Jesus, it says in the Bible, sung hymns. Singing is important. If Jesus can do it, if God can do it, then why not I? In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praises. We worship a triune God. That means the three in one who sings, and he wants us to sing and be like him. There are some things that are important about singing. Augustine who was also an influencer of the early church, was conscious of how music can distract us from the words because he was one who thought, like some people do, that the words are more important than the songs. And so he cautioned people against singing too much in church. And I don't know if you're familiar with Ulrich Zwingli. He certainly didn't have a good idea here, but for... Uh, in the 16th century, he was a Swiss pastor, and he's one that influenced the United Methodists as well. But he went even further, and he was so concerned about the power of music that he, for a while, did not encourage people to sing at all in church because he felt that it was important to hear the words. But even he decided that it was better to have music than not. Music and the word are meant to be in conflict with each other. God wants them together. When we come to church on Sunday morning, it is important that we have a unified front, not just with each other as Christians, but that the music is the same as the scripture that is being read, that it is telling a story that enhances each other. And there is reasons for that. <coughs> I need another drink. God didn't intend that music supersedes the word or that music undermine the word. He gave us music to serve the word. When that relationship is understood and appreciated, music becomes a very powerful gift. It supports and it deepens the impact of the words when we sing. Singing can also help us remember words. The first thing that singing does is it helps us in memorizing. How easy it is to learn things when we put a tune behind it. How many people learned all the Bible, all the books of the Bible by singing the song? Anybody? Did you remember doing that when you were a kid? No, you did it the hard way then. Oh, okay. Right, right. Mm -hmm. they, they do that with the Old Testament too. Um, I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> but I remember trying to do it. Um, Ever notice how easy it is to recall hymns that when you sing them, when you, grew them, when you grew up with them? I know one of the things that helpful to me in becoming a pastor is, is all the singing that I've done. And I've gotten to know a lot of songs in my time. And it helps me when it comes to singing here and, and singing out loud to help you guys sing. 
the singing, the very act of singing helps instill in our brain those words. That even after 20 years, we can come back and sing a song that we haven't heard in a long time. We store hundreds and thousands of songs in our memory and we can access them when we practice them. Music has a powerful mnemonic ability that scientists are just beginning to understand. They discover that our minds are hardwired to recognize and categorize and remember patterns of music better than we remember patterns in the words alone. One of the things that I found surprising is, is that music is got a math to it. That's part of what helps our brain in, in learning things and, and it picks up patterns because there is this math that's inherent to music. Even patients that have Alzheimer's can come out of their, their memory deficit and sing songs when they can't even remember their loved ones' names. It's something that's been recorded. So memory and music, music has an powerful impact on the brain. When does music's mnemonic abilities, um, how, do they, how can we use them for Christ? Like I said, we can use them to learn the books of the Bible, but it is very true that the book of Psalms was meant for the, the people of he, the Hebrew nation to learn about their, their faith by singing those songs. That it, those words in there, that's why we read them today, because we, they tell us about who we are as Christians. So having those words in there are important. Part of hearing the songs that we do, I'm sorry, but my throat is. <clears throat> we are having uh, songs that come that help us. One of the big stressors in the church is always in every church I've been to there's always been at least some amount of discussion of having the hymns over the new praise music or the new contemporary Christian music you know the the and and most oftentimes my mom is included the the piano and the musicians are more interested in sticking to the hymnals and the the music that we have but even in Modern day, it is something that we lose people, the younger people, when we're not doing the songs that, that they understand, the, the type of music that they can get behind. And I know that there is always reasonings behind why we should do the hymnals and that, and I'm not saying one is good or, or better, but even Wesley, in his time, he took bar tunes actual bar tunes and rewrote the scriptures that came from that so that the people when they sang they could hear the tune and then the new songs would fill in it would it would they could be singing something that was helpful and spiritually uh in lifting to them rather than the bar songs but that is part of that whole split and divide that's in the churches and I know in churches even today we tend to I know the church that I came from in Swartz Creek um, they split their service because they had a, a morning service which had a praise band and then they had uh, the later service and that was strictly hymn music and what oftentimes happening is is that you end up with two churches each with a different idea of what they think church is about. And part of what music should be doing is bringing us together and not separating us. The other thing is, is that along with helping us remember words, singing also connects uh, the words we hear with our heart. They bring with them an emotional impact. 
I remember um, one time singing the, the song, and we all know the song, Amazing Grace. But for some reason, that particular time, and ever since then, I really started to pay attention to the words of Amazing Grace. And it brought me to tears to think that God loved us so much that his grace did those things for us. That it, it was all of a sudden a new emotional level that was brought to me on a song that I had sung over and over again. Another thing that talks about in 1 Samuel was that David played his harp. And we know that he was skilled at doing it because he helped Saul in his troubled spirit. It's an important thing to see that, to understand that the emotions that come out from music is, is connected to it. One of the things that we often think of, especially in the United Methodist Church, that we do not think like the, the uh, um, can't think of the name, but there are some churches who believe in emotionalism, and when you are being connected to the song or the words on an emotional level, that somehow the spirit is more there than when it isn't. And sometimes we think in the United Methodist Church that we do not have a lot of connection with emotions in our service. And those things are kind of in error because emotions should be something that the song connects us to because it helps us with memory. But it is an infall infall inf uh, infallible sign. It's something that we think of as not true as true which really isn't the fact that emotions mean that the spirit is there it just means that your brain is working that the music is doing its job <clears throat> but also on the other end when we sing and we don't tend to have emotion at all we try to avoid it that is also bad it's not something that we should do Finally, we must be clear that the gospel, the word, and music should unite us. It should be something that brings us together. And that's part of what I want to do is, is when we sing here in a few minutes is to make us feel more connected. The Savior has rescued us that we might sing the song of redemption of the redeemed, that we sing it well. May we sing it constantly, and may we sing it passionately. May we sing it lustfully, as Wesley said. And may we sing it for his glory and the advancing of the gospel until, it, until he comes again. So what I'd like to do is have Sue come up, and we're going to uh, have you pick some songs. We'll probably do about four songs. We'll just do a couple verses of each song, and um, we might go over a little bit today, but um, this is something that I felt like we should try to do. So let's pick some. Yes? 370. 370. Victory in Jesus. We'll do the first two verses. <clears throat> I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me.
sought me and bought me in his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Out his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk and caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and hear my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought me to the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming don't have to stand for this. If you want to stay seated, you can stay seated. We're, this, is, this is just extra. If you want to stand, you can, but it, you don't have to stand for this. Go ahead. Who? 314. I'm sorry? 77. 77. I know that number. I know I know that song. Oh, yeah. How great thou art. First two verses. <clears throat> oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. How great thou art, 
that sings my soul. Five seventy We will go on with the service, and instead of the song that I have here in the bulletin, we'll do 558. Okay? So you can be seated. We got one more song planned, so we'll do it.
Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We ask that you take these gifts that we've given freely and happily to you, dear Lord, that you take them and bless them, use them for the furthering of your kingdom here on earth. In your precious name, amen. Now, instead of the closing hymn, we'll do 558. We'll do the first two verses. I am the church, you are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church we are the church together all who follow jesus all around the world yes we're the church together we're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces of colors and all ages too from all times and places i am the church we are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. I think this song is a good example of a song that teaches us how to be as a church. When you look through it, you know there are things that are true, very true about it, that we're the church is not the building, it's the people. And the church is not just in one time, but it covers all times, and it covers all places. And uh, it, the church is something that marches forward. It's the people that does the marching. So it makes sense that it is. But oftentimes when we get new people into the church, what is the first thing we have to tell them? This isn't the church. This is the church. You guys are. And that is part of what music does. It helps us tell us how we are, who we are as Christians. So you can be seated, and uh, we will continue on with the Holy Communion. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, before you had formed the earth, <coughs> from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness. <coughs> You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on all the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made a covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the, where the Christ was born, 
and your sign and witness in every age throughout the world, you have led people from faraway places to his light. By the baptism and the by the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivering us from the slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in the remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave it to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in the remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving and holy and living sacrifice in the union with Christ's offering for us. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. May we be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in the ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. In the United Methodist Church, we have traditions that we follow. It is part of being a United Methodist that we have what's called an open table. And because it's an open table, that means if you're in this room, you are invited to that table. You are welcome to partake. You do not have to be a member. You do not have to be a a professing believer. All you need to do is have a heart to get to know who God is. That is all that's required. So please come forward.
let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, I thank you for this time. Even though I don't feel quite so, so up to snuff as I would like to be, I thank you for this opportunity, this opportunity to, to be the voice that you need me to be. I pray that you use this time, this idea of music and this idea of song, this idea that you sing when we are deserving. I pray that you be with us and help us to appreciate it when we are given the opportunity to sing ourselves, that we sing for you, for the glory of you and all that you are. I ask that you be with these people and all that they're doing this week and bring them back safely again under your tender care. Amen. Amen.